In a time not very long ago, in the city of Boston, there lived a chemist called Professor Dawes. Chemistry can be very boring to some and quite interesting to others, but very few dealt with chemistry the way Professor Dawes did. You see, Professor Dawes was fond of magic, and many a time he would mix up the various compounds to create some very unique and magical potions. Well, many people would not believe in them outright, but then, if you were as talented as Madame Clarabelle, suddenly then, you would need some magic in life. Oh, good day, Doctor. Ah, Miss Clarabelle, such a pleasure to see you. Thank you for meeting me so soon. I hope I did not cause you any inconvenience. Oh no! It is always such a pleasure to see anyone who is particularly interested in my magic. So pray, tell me, what can I do for you? You see, Doctor, since the time I can recall, I have always had this dream to go up on stage, do theater. Ah, that is such a noble, such a grand dream to have. So, you must be proficient in acting then. I don't know. It's just that the thought of seeing so many people in the audience makes my throat go dry and forget all my lines. But that happens to everyone. You should not bother with a few bad auditions. Auditions? Oh, uh, what are they? <clears throat> you don't know what an audition is? Surely you must have tried for some roles in a production. I told you, the very thought makes me forget my lines and dialogues. If you have never even auditioned, what lines and dialogues are you talking about? I told you, I forget. Well, okay. Then, dancing? You must be good at dancing. Well, I love to dance, but it's just that I can never stick to a beat and rhythm, you know? If you just take the beat and the music away, I actually am a very good dancer. So, you dance very well without rhythm and music. Uh, how about singing? Uh-uh. Beats and music there, too, you know. Plus, singing has notes. You want to hear? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. That'll be enough. Thank you. How about playing an instrument? Piano? Of course, music, beats, and notes. And fingers, too. I tell you, if the piano should be played with just one finger at a time, then... I would be really good at it. Ugh. Acrobats. Acrobats in martial arts don't need rhythm and music and notes. They just go, yeah, and yeah, da -da. Yes, but all the stretching and exercising, uh, no, never been good at that at all. Okay, I see that you really, I mean, really need my help. But why theater? I told you, it is my dream. Very well. Do meet me back here in ten days' time. I shall have something to help you with. Oh, thank you. So exactly after ten days, Clarabelle came back to Professor Dawes' office, and Professor Dawes looked really pleased with himself. Ah, hello. Please come in. Have a seat. Some tea? Ah, uh, just tell me. Do you have some potion or something ready for me? Much better than potions, my lady. I am not a regular abracadabra wizard. <laughs> I am a professor and a sophisticated one at that. So my potions are not ugly, bitter concoctions. My remedies 
are suave and delightful. Voila! Here are your confections. Sweet, delicious bonbons. But do not be fooled by their innocent looks. They are quite potent. The lavender bonbon here enables light and graceful dancing. The pink one will make you sing like a nightingale. The white one will make you an orator par excellence. And the chocolate one will make you play the piano like a maestro. The lemon yellow bonbon will make you do acrobats that the world has not seen before. Ah, oh, super! Thank you so much. Do be careful in their use, though. They are rather strong. Oh, don't you worry. Clarabelle was overjoyed with her treasure. Nothing could now stop her from becoming a star. She started dreaming about all the people who would gather for her autographs and interviews and pictures. She had to look good for all of that. She had to get her hair done and buy new dresses. She suddenly saw a boutique on the way, and she bade the cab to stop. As she ran in to buy dresses, she forgot her precious package in the cab itself, which was promptly hired by a mother and daughter who were carrying about a million packages between them. Mother, a cab! Stop! The cab reached their home and all the packages were taken inside. As little Bessie saw the box of bonbons, she didn't remember having picked them up. She knew it was someone else's package that had come to them by mistake. But come on, after all, they were only bonbons and they looked so delicious. She decided to pick one and try it out. As soon as she had taken the first bite, she felt an urge so strong to go to the piano and play. Oh, how Bessie played. Her mother was shocked. Oh, my daughter is a prodigy. Who is playing? Is this Bessie? Our Bessie? Yes! Oh, I could stand here all day, but... But our friends the governor and the mayor will be here any minute. So we cannot just stand around. My, they will be pleased when they hear Bessie play. So Bessie continued playing. Her mother noticed the box of confections and thought how lovely it might be to taste one of those delicious bonbons. So she picked the white one, the one with oratory skills. A little later, the bell rang and the important guests, the governor and the mayor, arrived. Hello, please come in, gentlemen. Dora, look, our guests have arrived. Oh, all the world's a stage, and all men and women are but players. They have their entries and exits. Uh, are you all right? Gentlemen, please, come. That music. Oh, that's my daughter playing the piano. They all heard Bessie play. Bessie's father was nervous as to how strange his wife was behaving before such important guests. And a bonbon suddenly seems so desirable when one is nervous, so he chose the pink one, the one with the power of singing. Even mayors and governors like their sweets. They eyed the box of bonbons longingly. The father quickly offered them the bonbons. While the mayor was quick to gobble his lemon yellow one, the governor quite dignifiedly put the lavender bonbon in his pocket, saving it for later. Because right at that time, the woman came to ask them to the table for dinner. Oh, seize the moment. Remember all these women on the Titanic who waved off the dessert cart. Dinner is ready and waiting. What is wrong with all of you? <laughs> we are so sorry. You too, Judas. All the world's a stage. 
Ja, ja, ja. This is a house of the insane. Insane. Ridiculous. What am I even doing here with these people? Well, how quickly we jump to conclusions. The very people who were our friends we would dine with suddenly become ridiculous and silly. The governor had to give a huge speech to hundreds of people in the town hall the following morning. As he was dressing, he dug in the pocket of his previous night's jacket to find his keys, and with the keys, he found the bonbon which he had kept there. So he took the bonbon along with him. When the governor saw the crowd at town hall, he became nervous. He dug into his pocket, for he wanted his kerchief to wipe his sweat. And that's when he found it, the bonbon. He opened it and gobbled it up. The announcer called him to the mic. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the Governor. <gasps> Is he our Governor? He is insane! Ridiculous! What is he even doing here? We should remove him from office! Terrible! News of the dancing governor filled the next day's paper, and people demanded that he be removed from office while laughing at him. The very things the governor said about others, others said about him. What do you think might have caused the governor to behave so strangely? Maybe just the stress? I have no idea what could have gotten into the governor to behave like this. But to think of it, we all behaved strange, didn't we? You were reciting verses, and Bessie played the piano as though she were a maestro. Coming to think of it, wait. You saw that in the news right before he danced, the governor ate something. That's a bonbon! Bon. I am very sure. We didn't buy any bonbons yesterday, Bessie. So where did that box come from? Well, uh, Mother, actually, it, it was there with the packages we got. But it wasn't ours. <gasps> we didn't buy bonbons. We should not have taken the package if it wasn't ours, Bessie. I am sorry, Mother. I will never do it again. They might have still not realized that the bonbons were magical. But when Professor Dawes saw the news, he did realize. Clarabelle came back to him for another box. Thank you, what a mess. The previous box getting lost like that. Well, this one will only work for you and for no one else, even if they eat it. But be careful for their effect is temporary. When we rely on others' talents to fulfill our dreams, it never works out. With the help of the bonbons, Clarabelle did land a role of a heroine in a play, but the effect of the bonbon wore off right in the middle of the performance. Oh, oh my God, I am so sorry. And thus ended Clarabelle's career as a star. As far as the governor is concerned, he fell in love with dancing and now goes to ballet classes. And the mayor? He still tries to kick and break bricks or to test his strength, but doesn't quite get it. He hasn't realized it was just the temporary effect of a magic bonbon. Hey! <coughs> you know what happens if we pick up the package that's not ours? One should never do that. And as for Clarabelle, she did practice and practice, and finally became an actor. She too realized that we shouldn't rely on others. Instead, we should put in hard work towards our dream to achieve it.